I'm talking about an insect called a cicada. They're in the news at the moment in America. Um, they are a, a small flying insect. And the reason they're in the news at the moment is because they spend a huge amount of their lives underground. And uh, very occasionally they come out in a big swarm uh, for the three Fs, feeding, fighting and mating. And um, in America, this particular uh, cicada, it's called a periodical cicada, and this one comes out every 17 years. The reason I want to talk about it is because it illustrates uh, an interesting way that nature does maths. Um, because if, if you want to do maths, if you want to solve a problem in mathematics, what you do is you start with uh, all the facts that you already know. Uh, you combine those facts together using mathematical logic to create some new fact. Um, that you didn't know before. So that's how you would prove something in mathematics, how you would solve a problem. This is not what they look like, but let's have a go. <laughs> okay, so this kind of, uh, imagine you've got uh, a lovely wing. There you go. It's, all, it's mostly wing. Big boggly red eyes, maybe there's some antenna kind of going on. Legs coming out, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Is that, that's really, are you serious? Yeah, that's, I mean, it's, look, it's as close as we're going to get. I know it looks like a kind of a weird cow or something. This illustrates the way that uh, nature does maths. It's basically, uh, instead of having this uh, logical, methodical process, uh, you just sort of have a guess. Uh, and uh, you see if, you, if your answer is correct, you, you test it. And uh, if it's not correct, then you try a new answer and see if that gets you any closer. Uh, and you keep trying and trying and trying. So it's a process of trial and error. Uh, and this is genuinely a way that you can solve problems in mathematics. I think that the best example of trial and error that uh, the world has ever seen is evolution, so natural selection. So how, how has this happened with, with the, the cicada? Um, well, the first thing to know about the cicada is that it has a really interesting method of uh, protecting itself against predators. Uh, and, and that is something called predator satiation, which is basically uh, where you make yourself so numerous that your predator is, is literally full, it's too full, can't eat anymore. Um, and that's how you survive. But you sort of think, well, how can that work? Surely if you, uh, if you satiate your predator, then your predator is just going to come back stronger in the next generation and, uh, and eat even more of you. That can only work for the predator if the predator can make its life cycle the same as yours. So it's in step with you. So it's eating when you're, uh, when you're out and about doing your thing as well. And so the next thing that cicada does is to make its life cycle really, really long. Uh, too long for the predator. For some reason, predators can't have this really long life cycle. So that's why the cicada has this really long life cycle. Um, it's to kind of get out of step with, with the predator. Um, so let's, let's look at that on the number line. One, two, three, four, 15, 16, 17. So um, let's write those out. So uh, zero, uh, one, two, three, four. 15, 16, uh, 17. So this particular cicada that's in the news comes out every 17 years. There's another one that comes out every 13 years. Is that important? Could it be some other thing? Um, so for example, what if the cicada chose a 12 year life cycle? The predator, that's too long for the predator. It can't wait 12 years, but the predator still has a trick. So maybe the predator has a six year life cycle instead. So the predator comes out after six years, there's a, a predator comes out there and there are no cicadas. But the next generation of the predator, that's at 12 years and suddenly there are loads of cicadas there and so every other generation of this uh, predator is able to feed on cicadas and that gives them an advantage and they will grow and they will uh, flourish. Or if six years is too long, how about a, a four-year cycle? So we go four years, no cicadas, eight years, no cicadas, 12 years, cicadas. If four's too long, you could even have a three-year life cycle. So uh, the first three years, uh, no cicadas. Uh, the second three years, no cicadas. Third three years, no cicadas. Fourth lot of three years, that's 12 years, cicadas. Even two years, that'll work as well. So if you're a cicada and you choose a 12-year life cycle, that's a terrible decision because 12 ha uh, has all these things that you can divide it into. So 12 is divisible by six, divisible by four, divisible by three, and divisible by two. So if you're a cicada, you need to choose a life cycle uh, which just is not divisible by anything. So Brady, what, uh, what's a number that's not divisible by anything? I'm, I'm no expert, but I reckon <laughs> you're heading here towards prime numbers. Prime numbers, exactly. So that is why the cicada has chosen a 13-year life cycle and a 
year life cycle. It's the solution to a mathematical problem and it's the discovery of, of prime numbers by natural selection. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, so a cicada lives for 17 years, but uh, 16 of those years, years are spent underground uh, as in a sort of larval state and then they come out in a big swarm in the 17th year. 13 and 17 years seems like a long time. There are a lot of prime numbers lower than that. Well, yes, there are. Um, but I suppose the issue with smaller numbers is that m just maybe the predator could stretch to having a life cycle that long uh, and so they can, they can get into step with it. The great thing is, by the way, if you've got, uh, a, say, a 13-year life cycle and your predator has a four-year four life cycle, um, how often will the predator and the prey meet? Well, it's four uh, times 13 or four times 17. So you have to multiply the two numbers together and it becomes this enormous thing. And, and, and that's, the, that's the genius. If there was some common factor to these two, uh, then, then it, you wouldn't have to multiply them together to find out when they meet. It'd be a much smaller number. The predator is a wasp. It's called the cicada-killing wasp. Uh, I don't know where they got that name from, but uh, uh, those guys are crazy. Yeah, the wasp is great. Uh, it basically uh, it kills the cicada with a sting and then it, and it plants an egg inside the cicada's dead body, which then feeds on it from the inside uh, and then releases a, uh, a wasp at the end of it. It's a great way to go. Um, but yeah, I, I, love the, I love the idea of um, satiating your predator. Like you, you really don't want to be in the vanguard of, of, the, <laughs> you know, of the cicada group uh, when, that's your, when, when that's your policy. You have to go really far down this approximation uh, route before you get close to the golden ratio, much more so than pi or, or whatever. So the golden ratio is the most irrational number. 